Hey, good evening everyone. I'm DJ Petition. Welcome to uh, making the world a better place through better DJ technique. Uh, how you doing? No, we haven't really talked too much about acoustics. We did a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago uh, when I did the little test with the monitoring where I went around my apartment and I wanted you to hear how my voice sounded in different areas of the space. But lesson for you, case in point, right before I started this video, I need to set up a uh, uh, good old trusty here, my monitor speaker, so that we're going to be listening to a lot of music tonight. But I, what I needed to do was to set up the monitor speaker so that when you're playing this video, the music sounds as good as possible. Meaning it doesn't sound all wiry like a radio, you know, out in Kansas that can't get, like, you know, reception, like, shh, <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to get the music to sound as realistic as possible. Here, I'm just showing my masterpiece. Okay. Oh, it's just a little like interference. Nothing to worry about. Just, well, don't do it if you're putting together like 20 foot tall speakers. That's not that no good. Just sure all your power's off, but, um,. Okay, let's listen to how this sounds. Hey, it's not as if that's by the way, that's Turn the World by Max Freegrant. Ah. The list to die for. Great tech house track. Uh, you may hear some more of that later. But anyway, look, it doesn't sound perfect. The sound it doesn't sound right like you're there. But for a, you know a video on YouTube, um, and you know just kind of like Jimmy rigging it, Jerry rigging it rather with my speaker in my apartment and stuff. You know. It doesn't sound too bad, you know, if you turned it up loud and you were, like, jamming to it a little bit or whatever. You know, it's the best that I can do, but, you know, you hear the bass, you hear the, you hear the treble, you hear, it doesn't sound too bad, right? But I spent an hour doing that because I had to get the speaker in the right place, I had to get the EQs on my equalizer set in the right place, uh, on my mixer, um, and I didn't take the precise measurements of when we did this before with the music and the mixing as to where exactly my computer should go juxtapose my monitor speaker so that you know the sound is going to be relatively pleasing and you're going to have you know a moderate aural uh, uh, experience so that you know it sounds like club music it doesn't it sounds you hear your bass you hear your treble you hear your mid-range a little bit so I spent as I said, the better part of an hour adjusting the speaker forward, back on the table, over here should be by the computer, at what angle, this type of, you know, should, should the table be like pointing this way to light, I'm doing like a Rocky Horror, like, you know, Blair Witch Project uh, look tonight, you know, I'm a little bit in the dark, uh, you know, um, welcome to Tales the Crap. Yeah, I, I didn't feel like having the lights on, you know, I want to mix it up a little bit, so meaning therefore I need to have certain things positioned in a certain place so that you can see enough of me, but I don't want to be too too in the, in the light so that I have to put certain furniture in certain places and I don't want to put the speaker from, like in a position where it's going to fall off and like shatter and like pull the computer down with it. So that's something to be considered, you know, meaning orientation of the room. These are all aspects of acoustics as well. You know, practicality. Can I can I put this? Is this going to be in a stable place? Is this speaker going to be stable? Is it, is it not going to fall? Is it not going to clip uh, from volume? Clip meaning like is the subwoofer not going to blow? Is it loud? Is it going to disturb the neighbors? I live in a in a in a building. It's a modern building, so I I can't have it too loud. It's like two. It's like two fifteen in the morning. I, I can't have it too loud, but I have to have I have to have levels high enough so that they're going to sound good to you when you watch this. Um, I have to have the bass turned up enough. Um, is it going to uh, 
you get the idea. Uh, so, that's a bit of acoustics, you know, this is like Jerry rigging in my little studio, but if this was for a big party, if this was for a stadium, same basic premise, same basic ideas with figuring out acoustics of a space, you know, where to play speakers, you're building a club, you want to know what type of speakers, because different speakers sound different ways, you know, like, whether you want a metal speaker or not. Well, what speaker, little speakers, how many tweeters, how many mid, mid speakers, how many subwoofers, uh, that's your below, that's your big, really big bass. Um, all these factors go into uh, building a sound space, building a soundscape. And then you got, then you got me, I'm the DJ, and I've got to understand the basics of this so that the records of the music that I play are going to most, uh, be maximized and optimized by this space. Uh, so, it all, it all kind of comes to pass, you know, and, and uh, you got to have a little bit of understanding about a little bit of a little bit. Okay, so continuing onward, um, I am going to, this is going to be a, tonight's going to be a combination of, um, Playing music and also uh, note-taking. Um, I'm not going to show it to you, but you can refer back. If you already have a controller, you can you can think of it in that area. If You, you can refer back to, I forget what episode it was, but it was where I showed you the uh, Serato mixer. And this pertains to the part of the mixer uh, where you're out, where your library is contained, where all of your tracks are. The tracks that you drag onto the left deck or you drag onto the right deck in order to be played, or shall I say, programmed. Remember, a good DJ plays music, a better DJ programs music. It's the P word. Remember, Pussy Willows, Daddy! Pussy! <laughs> Serial bomb joke. So, why I'm telling you this is, because I don't have the technology where I can like flip it and show you again the library. So in your in your uh, Serato library or your uh, your whatever program you use, your uh, uh, Tech DJ today or your your uh, your software. I'm using I'm using Serato, but I'm but most software is designed the same way. I would imagine, <laughs> you know, there's the largest part of your your software is your where your library is, your listing, your index, your manifesto, your your uh, <laughs> the whole reason for <laughs> why your life is worth living. <laughs> Didn't you almost have it all? <laughs> of course, that's where your that's where your repertoire is. That's where your music is. Without that, you'd be nothing. <laughs> you know, so why I'm bringing this up is because in that section, like when I'm looking at on my Serato now, there's a point to this, okay? It's not just because I've been talking the magic dragon a little bit. Um, while I'm looking at my Serato right now, below where the decks are, okay? And on the far left, I see the section I showed you where you're crates are. That's where you create different styles of music. You know, uh, st uh, styles of your, I'm going to go through it, of where your, uh, your crates are, you know, which I showed you on mine that I created. High energy, house, tech house, diva house, bitch tracks, you know, your categories of music where you put your, um, you want to like put parts of your library in, you know, for convenience. So if you, you know, the other a uh, uh, bitch track is called for you can just go into that folder but it just it just moves them into the folder it doesn't take them and it just copies them from the main uh, part of the library that we're talking about which is our next stop to the right so in mine on Serato the first column we see is art I'm not going to be concerned with that because in my collection there's very little artwork and we know why that is don't we <laughs> Uh, no, she didn't. Next column, album. Now, this can be a little tricky, but I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. The album is basically, you know, we're talking about, um, if it's from, like, a compilation, 
you know, like if you were on your um, your music site where you download music, whatever, and it was a track not that was being sold individually, but it was a track that came off of someone's compilation um, or a compilation of music. Um, it, it's it, it it's more for like sales purposes, I think, you know. But it just lets you know that if you wanted to know, you know, uh, for I guess you know sales purposes or like who if you want to know it's for the DJ like you want to know more about where the the track that you're playing uh, originated from specifically uh, the family of a collective of, of artists producers and people where it originated from um, kind of beside the point um, next stop column on mine is the number of plays how many times I've played it Oh, look, <laughs> Last Dance, 304,000 times. Wow, that's a lot of times to play it. <laughs> Underneath that, I'll get you my pretty. Number of times played, 8,304,000 times. Oh, wow, <laughs> guess I like that one, no. So, anyway, in all seriousness, this is where I am making my focus. The next stop is Song. Okay, so, song title, Beside You. So I'm going to give you like what I, what I see for this song. This is from um, the, I don't know, album. I can't think of what, to see what the album is. But it just says in my system, Beside You is the album, number plays one. The song title is Beside You, and it says in parentheses, Original Mix. Then the next column is Artist. Which is not really the artist. It's that's the guy who remixed it, Fabian Gray and Emmanuel. Um, uh, I've overwritten the last name, which I'm going to explain in a minute. Um, by the way, the columns after that, which we don't need to worry about right now, uh, are the BPMs, the history, and the, um, the the key that it's in. And also at the very end, the com the column that we want to avoid is comment column, which. Uh, more times than not, in my case not, it will say where it was purchased. We do not want to put anything in that column of comments. Again, we do not want to put anything in that. We do not want to write or overwrite in that comment column because I got into a lot of trouble with like overwriting the part where it says purchased a track source or any other information that it put there because it erased it. The whole purpose and point to what I am saying is where I put my notes about the track, about Beside You by Fabian Gray and Emmanuel, I write my notes in the song column and in the artist column. And if there's not enough room there to see, then I overwrite. Now, Make sure that you have enabled in your settings, in Serato, your ability to overwrite. So that involves going to the little settings gear, scrolling over to library and display. This is again Serato, but you'll have something very similar in your programming. And going to an area called library. And uncheck marking the box that says protect library or something similar to that or something that says something to the effect of edit library or um, overwrite library, something to that effect, you want to uncheck mark that box so that that gives you administrative privileges to do what I'm about to tell you that I do, but that you do not necessarily have to do. And what that is, is to put your notes in the song column next to the name of the song or in the artist column next to the name of the artist because what I can now do is I can click on these columns and I can do whatever I want in these columns up until including overwriting the entire name of the song overwriting the entire name of the artist in order to put my notes for as long as I would like them to be even though I have overwritten the entire song and artist, and sometimes I will and do, and that's my business and not yours. Well, it is now. 
So that's the lesson on that. If you don't understand what I just said, or the whys and the wherefores, stop, go back, and listen to what I said again. Because even though I repeat myself constantly, I'm not going to repeat this. Because there's only so many different ways I can say it. And I said it very clearly, and I said it very succinctly. Notes. When I say notes, I mean key words. Sexy. Slow. Hot. Disco. Sleaze. Energy. Wow. In my library, we have wows. We have swamis. We have swing beat. We have a lot of trans. <laughs> Not like what you think. For transitional. I use a lot of descriptive words. That's why when we're going to listen to the music that we're going to listen to, use your search. I love the search. The search is above where the area is for your library content. And use key search words. I've told students and friends before when I export parts or the entirety at times of my library to them and they get it on their phone or their computer. Let's take an example of the time-honored classic uh, house music song by the delightful Robin S. Show Me Love. So, what, you know, might show up on their track listing, on most people's track listing, it might say Robin S. Show Me Love Extended Mix. When people get mine, it might say, uh, Rob, uh, a sexy stone UK uh, imp show me uh, sex uh, house dub UK imp love guy phone num six three four <laughs> meaning I make notes you know, to remind me of things. About the song, about the record, about how it made me feel, about what I was doing at the time. Because I want to remember how it made me feel, or what I was doing, or sensations that, that come over me when I hear it. Like, I have a term in music. It's not, it's not a record, or it's not an official uh, DJ International Coalition term, such as House, Deep House, uh, or Afro House. But it's a term that I use in my library, or I was using often when I was pursuing this kind of music. I call it Swami. It's called Swami. You'll see, if I type Swami into my search, a lot of records will come up, and it's sort of like, I call it like, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's kind of in the progressive house category, uh, but you'll hear like these sort of like belly dancing, like <laughs> sort of like snake charmer music, which is a perfect time to give you an example. That's a great segue into our next section of the show, because she's starting to like get a little mouthy, babbly, 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 babbly. So let's, let's get into, um, which I was going to do is like, uh, punch keywords into my search, and we, we're going to talk about it, why I do so. I'm melting, I'm melting. I'm going off the screen. I'm trying to find a way to, like, have, so I can see myself and the Serato at the same time, and the bigger computer screen. Hold on.
Mr. Bun moment, please. Mr. Hart can't come because the phone is all tied up at the moment. Dora Lee, could you come in here for a moment? Dora Lee, could you come back here for a moment, please, honey? I'm doing jokes from 9 to 5 while I'm finding out. Okay. Alright. Now, the, did we talk about theme yet? Oh, Jesus Christ, Clarice. Here we go. Loud, so I'm never gonna stop me. Let's turn it down a little bit. Right. Okay. This is by Cock and Fitch. It sounds like it sounds like a drag queen term, does it? Like, give me the Cock and Fish. Give me the dish. This is a bitch track. You'll see why. It's more of a like eternal dish track. Um, it's called Answering Machine. It's by Green Velvet. Yeah, Green Velvet. Who's gonna take me to the after party? Me! Oh, let's listen. You heard this probably. in the term Swami and play a Swami track for you. I think of this song. I really love it. It's called like um, this guy is uh, uh, Do you hear this song? Listen to this song. She's horrible. She's horrible. Okay. So, um, can you believe, can you, can you believe this, can you believe what this girl is basically saying, I'm trying to find, I'm finding like I'm queuing right now, is what, you know what queuing is, um, it's very, very important, it's what you do, alright, so I picked out a record, and I'm basically getting it a little bit faster for, to match beats. Um, uh, okay, so, and I was just, I was just queuing, like I said, I can't boost monitor right now because I don't have, a, I don't have a deck, um, I had some misfortune last year and it got lost, so, but what queuing is, you can talk about queuing, queuing is all that you do in between the records that you play. You don't just put on a record and then go and find another record to put on. Well, I mean that's the idea, but you should you should go sometimes go sometimes you know exactly what you're gonna put on next because you just know. You feel like oh this record would go great, but sometimes you put on a record while the record's playing, which is called queuing. You listen just listen to it in your headphones. Nobody else hears it except you, and you listen to a few bars and you don't like it, so you go back into your collection and you find another record and you think oh that doesn't work either it's like you're like goldilocks you're like this one's too hot this one's too cold and you have to keep looking for records while that record is playing until you find the one that like really suits the situation and you've got to match it up match the beats up find out where you want to mix it in where it mixes out and um 
and get yourself all ready. It's like a, it's like an outfit change or a costume change during acts of a play, um, but spontaneously. You know, you've got to find the record that's going to work. You know, the best in style, in where you want to go as far as what your um, mission is in your night, uh, with it, how it's going to sound like technically. Um, there's, that's called programming and that's called cueing. Um, you know, uh, very important. So let's mix in our next record. I didn't have to like, look too hard or cue too much because we wanted to mix in a Swami style record. So let's do that in just a minute. I'm going to do that like soon because we're almost, should we count as 32 or we count as 32? Remember that? Remember, I'm not going to let you forget. I'm counting 32 now so I can mix. Go, here we go, here we go. Now I can't do really fabulous mixes because the volume's so low and I have room I have like neighbors, so but I'll do it for you as cute as I can, being in the plate and everything. I'll try and do like you know, do, do one of my like to make it like do pretty big. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. That last song was really bitchy. Did you, were you listening? I hope you were listening when I wasn't talking, or even while I was talking. Um, that last track. That's why it was a bitch track. It was about this girl who's like telling her boyfriend she's having someone else's baby, and then the guy whose baby having is like, it's very like, it's very like, it's cute, but I didn't play it for like too, too long, and if I was gonna play it, I'd be very careful about where and why I played it because it's a theme record, honey. It's a theme record. And like, let's talk about theme for a minute. There's a difference between themes, like playing happy themes or dance theme or summer theme or like, you know, um, the Fire Island theme or something. And playing theme. When you play theme, you've always got to make quote signs with your hand and play theme. Theme is playing like tired old records that like everyone's heard a thousand times and you do it every single fucking week. And theme is also playing music which is really nasty and really cunty all the time and really being like a fucking bitch about it, you know, and just like subjecting everybody to your nonsense. That's theme. It ain't cute, it ain't cunty. It's like just, it's just the tro, as the French would say. It's just you out there, you don't make a model, model, honey. You are the two, and you are like not even relevant to like anything because you are lost. You have like died in your own myth and story of narcissism, and you are not even a star by the water. Neighbor is um, knocking. 